I'm Ginny Just. And I'm Beth Soboloff. And we're Two, Two Grannies, Grannies on, on the, the road. road. I'm the older, funner, more adventurous Granny. Well, I'm the younger, level-headed, practical Granny. Mm. Well, at least I remember what I had for breakfast. I remember, I remember. We have a lot of challenges. We are single baby boomers. We have our single women that are facing the same problems that other women our age are having. And we're also business owners, and we face the same challenges that most small business owners in the U.S. face. Very difficult situation, and it's hard to survive. Yes. So we started to think outside the box. We had obstacles, personal obstacles. Um, we were trying to make ends meet, so two people sharing a house and living expenses was a perfect solution to that. Yeah, have you looked at your cable bill lately? We both wanted to see the U.S. We wanted to travel across the country and, and see all of the U.S. But owning a business, you can't just uh, leave it for two or three months. We didn't have the time or the resources to do that. So we figured, you know what, think outside the box and find a way to combine work and play at the same time. That's the only way this is ever going to happen. And we had an aha moment. I'm a graphic designer, Beth is a web designer. We have virtual businesses. We can literally take them on the road. Absolutely. We also do a lot of networking. And we figured out that we could network our way across the country and meet business owners who possibly would need our services. So at this point in time, we realized that this mission was much bigger than we had originally planned. We want to be able to do video interviews with older people, baby boomer owners of businesses, maybe the oldest owner of a business in a community, maybe the most unusual business, that type of thing. Yeah, so we basically want to connect with business owners across the country, do workshops, share our experience and knowledge with a combined, what do we have, a combined 35 years in business. 55. 55, well I was trying to, you know, <laughs> make us younger. Find ways that we can work together, brainstorm, whether it's creating mastermind groups, collaborating with other business owners, even competition, so that we can all be successful in business. And when we're successful in business, most of us will be able to live our, our dreams, whatever they are. Most of all, we want to have fun. This is a trip. We want to have fun, and we want to share that fun with, with people. Hi, I'm Ginny Just. And I'm Beth Soboloff. Welcome to the premiere episode of Two Grannies on the Road. The focus of our show will be interviewing baby boomers who aren't necessarily retiring, but are instead retreading. People who have transformed their lives after the age of 50, either out of necessity or because they are finally getting around to living their dreams. We think it's important to tell their stories because baby boomers have a lot to offer the world, even if some of the world thinks they may be coming irrelevant. Baby boomers, and especially women, are starting new businesses faster than any other segment of the population. You will notice that a lot of our shows will focus on business owners. Since this is our first episode, we thought we would interview each other as a way to introduce Two Grannies on the Road and what we are all about and what is our mission. Today we're talking to Beth Soboloff. Beth is a web designer and has owned her own business, Birchwood Web Design, for 13 years. She has three children and six grandchildren. Beth, welcome. Thank you. What made you decide to become a web designer and what were you doing before that? Well, I had sort of a career as uh, an office manager uh, and an executive assistant for most of my life. It wasn't very exciting and it was a little boring actually. And I'd always kind of wanted to do something like graphic design. But I was uh, a single mother, didn't have a lot of time or resources to change careers. But then I was working at a company where someone in the marketing department was taking a webmaster course. Now, this is 15 years ago. and was just when a webmaster was actually in a pretty new career. And it sounded like something that I'd really love to do. It would be a lot of fun. So I looked into it, and also the company had been bought out, and I knew there were going to be layoffs. Mm -hmm. So I said, this might be a really good time to change careers. And so I took the webmaster course. I did love it, and been doing it for 15 years. Wow. Yep. Well, what challenges did you have to overcome with this? 
Well, like anyone who is a, a single parent with um, little kids, uh, you know, there was time constraints, there were financial constraints, and uh, it, w it wasn't easy. But uh, I knew that I had to better my situation, and the only way to do that was to look at doing something, you know, bigger and better. So I just, I, I had help, of course, from family and friends, and I just made it happen. Great. What have been the biggest changes in your industry over the years, and how have you kept up with them? Well, as you can imagine, in 15 years, there were a lot of techno technology changes with web design. Mm -hmm. uh, the tools that you use, uh, the, the programming changed a lot. So I've had to keep up with that on my own. I've taken some courses, I've taken online courses, just learned on my own for the most part. For instance, search engine optimization, which is big now because companies want to come up on the first page of Google in a search. Well, that wasn't even a thing 15 years ago. Mm. Google might have been in existence, but it was brand new, and no one really cared about that. So it's been interesting. That's part of the fun, actually, is keeping up with new technology. Mm -hmm. Well, what have you noticed about being a baby boomer in the business world? It's funny because the last few years, um, I've noticed just a little bit, maybe a hint of age discrimination. Because think about it, web design involves technology, and I think people expect to see a 26-year-old mm. or a 20-something. You know, well, what what does a baby boomer know about technology, and how can they do a, a really hip, you know, new kind of a website? But then, you know, once I talk to them and they understand that experience is everything and that I have kept up with the technology and I know the most up-to-date you know, things to do, then they're okay. But I've, just, I've started to feel a little bit irrelevant because I'm not in the right age group to be hip. Hmm. Just the way it is. Well, how did the concept of two grannies on the road come about? Okay, so I've been in business for myself for 13 years now, and this was about five years ago, so it was seven years, eight years into it. And, you know, I, I never take a vacation, just working all the time. And I was starting to have kind of a little pity party for myself <laughs> about, oh, geez, I never get to take a vacation. I always wanted to travel across the U.S. in an RV with my kids, take like two or three months off and see our, our beautiful country. And poor me, I never could do that. And then I thought, well, wait a second, I have a virtual business maybe I could actually travel and still work at the same time. And so the wheels started turning, and then I thought, well, I wouldn't want to do it by myself at the time I was you know, still single, and I'd have to have somebody go with me. Well, wait a minute, what about Ginny Just? She's a graphic designer. She could work from anywhere. Maybe she'd want to go. I bet she'd be up for an adventure like this. And then the name came to me, Two Grannies on the Road. <laughs> Is Two Grannies on the Road just about traveling, or is, it, is there another mission? Well, as it started out, it was a you know, combination of work and play. So yes, we're going to do adventures and see the country, but uh, you know, work at the same time. But it's really evolved since the original idea, because as I said before about kind of feeling uh, as a baby boomer, starting to feel a little irrelevant, I've noticed that a lot of baby boomers are going through a lot of changes. Um, a lot of baby boomers have had a corporate job for 30 or 40 years. They're getting laid off mm -hmm. in uh, favor of these big companies hiring millennials because they can hire them cheaper. And then who's going to hire someone who's already 55 or 60 years old? So they think, well, what, what can I do now? They're not ready to retire, either don't want to or can't afford to. But then there's other baby boomers who have had a whole career, now their kids are off on their own, they're out of college, there's no more financial pressure, pressure there, and they're saying, you know what, now is time, my time to do what I want to do. I've always wanted to open a restaurant or whatever it is. So a lot of baby boomers uh, are starting new businesses and never have before. So with this phenomenon, and a lot of baby boomers know what they what they want to do or they have a dream but they think well I'm I'm just too old now it's too late and and I feel bad about that and I want baby boomers and even younger people to feel like they can live their dream no matter what so one of the missions of two grannies on the road is to inspire baby boomers to live their dreams no matter what 
Another part of the mission is also, I'd like to see millennials and baby boomers connect a little bit better. Um, you know how it is, people our age look at baby boomers and they think, they just don't want to work, they always have their head in their phone, they're lazy, they don't care about anything. And it's really not the case. By the way, Socrates said the same thing about the young people in his generation. That was a long time ago. But, you know, millennials have a lot to offer baby boomers in terms of technology. They've grown up with computers and smartphones. And as a number of baby boomers are still afraid of technology. Mm -hmm. And yet in the business world, you have to have a handle on technology. Heck, you have to have a handle on it just to keep up with your grandkids, you know. <laughs> and so a lot of baby boomers do that, but a lot still don't. So baby boomers can learn technology from millennials. And at the same time, what I've seen in the business world is that millennials can learn a lot from baby boomers in terms of communication skills, mm. especially face-to-face. -face. So those, that's kind of a double mission besides the fun of traveling. So how are you going to re um, achieve this mission? Well, we would like to do some workshops as we cross the country, um, you know, talk to business owners and encourage them to live their dreams no matter what. Um, talk to people about what we're doing and, you know, inspire them to mm -hmm. do what they want to do. But also, we're going to interview baby boomers as we cross the country and tell their stories because so many baby boomers have really interesting stories. They've done really great things. They're, they've switched careers late in life. Like I was 50 when I changed careers. I know of a lot of people that have done that. And it's fun and I, I think that, that telling that story as we cross the country I think will be inspiring to a lot of people. Okay. How are you going about finding the people you want to interview? Well we have a lot of contacts across the country through networking uh, organizations, uh, BNI, Business Network International, through chambers of commerce and that kind of thing. And I think we'll, we'll connect that way and call ahead and say, hey, we're coming into town. <laughs> you know, okay. it would be interesting to interview. What's your biggest obstacle to success? Uh, getting in my own way and getting discouraged. I don't like to hear the word no. Uh, <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, you know, kind of getting over that hurdle. So how will you overcome that? Well, I'm a big advocate of uh, coll collaboration and co-opetition and you know most people who are successful surround themselves with other people who can help them. You know you can open a pie shop because you're great at making pies. That doesn't mean you can balance the budget or do marketing. Mm -hmm. So everyone in business needs help and so that's what I plan on doing is surrounding myself with people who are smarter than I am about some <laughs> things. <laughs> she actually admits it. Yes. Um, we've been talking with Beth Sobolov of Birchwood Enterprise, um, web design, excuse me. That's all the time we have for the por this portion of the show. So Beth, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Before we go on to the next portion of the show, we thought it might be fun to interview some high school students about their impression of baby boomers. Here are the results. What's your name? Caitlin. Caitlin, are you, are you, do you go to this school? Yes, I'm in seventh grade. Okay. Do you know what a baby boomer is? Um, isn't that someone who was born, like, right after World War II? Very good. Do you know if your grandmother has a computer at all? I do not think she does, because sometimes I'll go over there and she does not have Wi-Fi, so. Okay. So, do, do they know about technology really well, or are they... Um, well, uh, I taught a lot of stuff to them, <laughs> uh, like how to use Google Drive and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm Ginny Just. I'm Zach Anderson. What the, what's the age of being old? Uh, maybe like 75, 80. Do you have grandparents? Yes, I do. Do they use technology yes, at my, all? Yes, my grandmother does. She has a laptop and Facebook and all that. Oh, cool. Did you teach her how to do it? No. She taught herself? No. All right. Good for Granny. <laughs> As a 19-year-old, can you relate to older people? Yeah, I, I know what I've learned about what they might be going through, had went through in their life, so I, I can relate to it. Like, understand what they went through. What's your name? Lexi. So 50 isn't old. Not really. Good. That's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> if, so if, if somebody is old, like they're 75 to 95, what do you think they should be doing? Um, they should probably be retired by then. They should be doing what they want to do. What they want to do. Ah, good answer. <laughs> is that what you want to be doing when you're 75? Yeah. 
<laughs> Excellent. So did your grandparents have computers? Yeah. How old were you when you had your first computer um, or smartphone? My first smartphone, I was probably 12, so 12. sixth grade-ish. Wow. And did you, were you on the computer already at that age? Yeah, we've had a, we had a computer my entire life. So what do you think you can learn from baby boomers? Um, probably how to communicate without technology. What's your name? Catherine. And so when someone's at that age, 70s or 80s, what should they be doing? Uh, it depends on what they're able to do, really. If they're on, like, air or whatever because they can't breathe, then they should be at home. But if they're fine health-wise and everything, it should be up to do whatever they want. Whatever they want. Yeah, because you hear on awesome. the news about, I think she was 100 years old, jumping out of a plane. plane so <laughs> she can do that. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. I hope I'm go. able to do that at 100. Yeah, yeah. exactly, right? And if you know older people, like you don't have grandparents mm -hmm. around, but older people, you probably know other older people, right? Do a lot of them have computers? Do they have smartphones? Uh, they do, but they just don't seem to work them very well, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> but what can you learn from an older person? Oh, do you think? I could probably a lot. I love listening to people's stories from back when they were they, when they were my age and all that stuff. So I love hearing about all that. I could learn about how life was when they were my age and all the different hardships they went through and everything, the history, mm -hmm. instead of just the general that you learn in class, the personal. Welcome to the second half of the show. Today we're talking to Jenny Just. Jenny is the owner of Just Associates, a graphic design company located in East Bridgewater. Jenny's a graduate of the Vesper George School of Arts. She has been in business for herself for 27 years. She's also taught graphic design at New England School of Art and Design and Cape Cod Community College. Jenny, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for asking me. Why did you decide to become a graphic designer? Ah, I knew somebody would ask me that sooner or later. I was married very, very young. I was 17. I don't recommend it. And I never got to go to college. And so then my marriage started to fail. And it was getting very uh, dangerous. So I decided I needed to do something. I, needed to, I knew I was going to have to support my kids. And I didn't have the wherewithal to do that. And I knew I didn't want to just um, use a cash register for the rest of my life. So I decided to go back to school. And I was always jealous of the fact that my sister was such a beautiful artist. She's a fine artist and does exquisite stuff. And I couldn't do that. But I had another person in my life that I really respected, whose name was uh, Herb Rogalski. And he was the art director, designer of the uh, Boston Globe magazine section. And I used to look at that stuff on Sundays and think, oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could. Wait a minute. I can do that. I'm creative. So I found out where he went to college. And I went for an interview there. I got in, spent the next three years and, uh, being super creative. And it was the best and the worst times of my life. But I'll never forget it. That's great. And uh, what, what kind of challenges did you have to overcome to get your dream career? Well, like you, I had children. And I had to shuffle um, going to school with baby, uh, babysitters and child care. I had to work because I, couldn't, I didn't get a scholarship or anything. I did eventually, but not at the beginning. Um, and I, it, was, it was hard work. and. Every night I came home from school and work and taking care of kids and so forth, go down in my basement where I had set up my workshop and go into a creative coma almost. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. What have been the biggest changes in your industry and how have you kept up with them? Yeah, like you, it's the technology, I would have to say, um, because design, good design is good design and the best computer in the world is the one that we have sitting on top of our shoulders. Um, but the technology that's not sitting on our shoulders is very, um, it changes all the time. And r right now, um, most designers that I know anyway, we work with what's called the creative suite, which is um, InDesign, Illustrator, Illus um, Photoshop, and Acrobat. 
And the, three of the, the four programs work together and make it much easier and so forth and, and much more complete. Um, and I learned the old-fashioned way how to do things by hand, drawing. Oh, shock that somebody would have actually be able to hand draw <laughs> something. Um, but it, it, working with that, you have to keep up with the changes in those pieces of software. You have to keep up with the computers themselves and make sure you have something that's powerful enough to be able to, to do what you need to do. So yeah, that's, it's been challenging. What was your reaction, now be honest, when you were asked to be part of Two Grannies on the Road? <laughs> she walked into my house and she was sitting on the sofa, I was sitting on a chair across from her, and the more she talked about this, the more I started to grin. And I knew that um, I was in because <laughs> she was so infectious. Infectious, there, that's the word. And so wh why is it important to you, this project? It's, it gives me a sense of purpose. Um, I think the thing that I'm looking forward to the most, besides the adventures and being able to see the country and so forth, is hearing other people's stories. And I, I know that I've, you know, the little bit that I've heard so far, it just inspires me to, to want to do more. So, yeah, that, that's the most important part to me. And how will that change your life? Well, I'm a freelance graphic designer. That means I work for myself and by myself. And I, I have to force myself to go out and do networking, which is great. Um, but by, being, by doing this, we will, um, I'll be able to get out of myself a little bit more and listen to other people. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me what you've noticed about being a business owner with gray hair. <laughs> you know, you call up somebody, a, a prospective new client, and you make arrangements to go to their place of work, their office, or so whatever. You walk into the office, and it is almost imperceptible that you see just a quick change in their face when they see the gray hair. And they, like you, it's a, it's a creative ser um, service, but it's also technological. And um, people just have an assumption that you're going to be younger. Once I'm able to talk to them and let them know that I have the experience and I know what I'm talking about, that does change. Yeah. So you do a lot of networking. Mm -hmm. And I know that you probably network with a lot of other business owners uh, and business people who are baby boomers. What have you noticed is the uh, biggest fear of most baby boomers? Fear of change, number one. Um, I think a lot of them feel that they're too old to do something new, and I'm here to tell them you're not. <laughs> I'm 69 years old, and I'm looking forward to a change that my mother would never have thought of doing, mm -hmm. never in a million years. But things are different now. Absolutely. And so what, are, what do you feel are your biggest obstacles to success? Money. Money. Okay. How will you overcome that? Get it. Get it how? Beg, borrow, steal. <laughs> no, steal? we won't steal. We won't steal. Honest, we won't. Oh, well, welcome, we to beg and borrow. <laughs> welcome to two grannies on the run. <laughs> Now tell me, why are you the uh, older, I know why you're the older, why are you the funner, more adventurous granny? Because I'm more adventurous, I'm more funner. I mean, what, it says it right there in my title. <laughs> I think we just invented a word, funner. <laughs> Get that, Webster? <laughs> what, are the, what adventures are you looking forward to on the trip? One that we found by accident was um, we had already done the zip lining, as you saw in the clip ahead of time. Um, but there's another form of that zip lining out in Las Vegas. We weren't going to stop in Las Vegas. That wasn't on the trip. But when we saw that you could take a zip line from the top of one of the buildings in, um, this is in downtown, not, in, not on the strip, and from one building to another. And you're not zip lighting like this. You're zip lighting like this. So you're flying <laughs> like Superman. <laughs> I want to do that so much. And then maybe we'll do something boring like water rafting on the Colorado River or, you know, fun stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's, there's a, 
go, whole town that's all ghost houses in Arizona, northwest Arizona, not Arizona, Arkansas. So I want to go there. She doesn't know that yet, but well, now she does. You're going there. I'm not. <laughs> and you're not going to, where is it? Elvis's Grace, uh, Graceland? No I'm going no. to Graceland. OK. OK. So what is going to happen after the trip? What are the future plans for Two Grannies on the Road? Oh, geez, more trips. I mean, our first trip, we want it to be down the eastern seaboard and along the bottom of the country and up a little bit and back again. But there's a whole northern part of the United States. There's a whole middle section of the United States. It's Alaska. There's all sorts of places that we can go and still be two grannies on the road. And b until you do the big trip, which is how many miles? 8,000 miles. Then, and what are you doing before you take that? Big oh, we're going to try to go to um, areas around the, around this area. You know, down to Cape Cod, um, certainly parts of Massachusetts. Go up to Mass, uh, go up to Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, down into Rhode Island, and so forth. And maybe even down into uh, New York and New Jersey. But um, there's nothing that says. I mean, we can go anywhere. We're two grannies on the road. <laughs> and after the trip, I heard there might be a book in the making. Well, we certainly hope so. We both love to write, so it's gonna it's it's gonna come. Whether it's an ebook or or a printed book, we don't know yet. But we already have somebody that's gonna write the foreword for us, so somebody has faith in us. Excellent. Well, we've been talking today with Ginny Just, owner of Just Associates. Ginny, thanks so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? It certainly was. I think we should do it again sometime. We hope that uh, this gives you some idea of what Two Grannies on the Road is all about. And um, what of course, else? The baby boomers are redefining what it's like to be a senior citizen. If you know someone who is a baby boomer who is retreading, we would love to tell their story. You can contact us at twogranniesontheroad.com. What are your goals? What are your dreams? We want to encourage you to think outside the box. Step out of your comfort zone. And just do it. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for tuning in. And be sure to watch for the next episode of Two, Two Grannies on, on the Road. road. So please join us as we share ideas as we support each other, you know, baby boomers have a lot to contribute. The rest of the world may think of baby boomers as becoming irrelevant. We sure don't. Nope. And we're Two, Two Grannies, Grannies on the Road. road.